In this video, we're going to see how we can uh, define filters for convolution. So, in the first example, we're going to compare uh, the mean filtering, so just an average uh, filtering, with two different size. So, I'm going to uh, duplicate this image. So, I made a mistake. So, if I go to image duplicate so for i'm going to do a filtering with a size 3 by 3 and i'm going to again duplicate this one image duplicate and with a filter 7 by 7 okay so let's start with the 3x3 three three filter. So to do a convolution, it's fairly easy. You go to Process, Filters, Convolve. And then you define uh, the kernel of uh, the convolution you want to apply. So I said that I would do a min filtering. So it's going to be one everywhere. And the first one is 3x3. Three three. So one one, one, again, and again, all right? And then you just hit OK, and you get your convolution, so we can adjust the intensity. And let's do the second convolution with a 7 by 7 uh, kernel. So again, you go to Process, Filters, Convolve, and now, instead of 3x3, three three, it's going to be 7x7. Seven seven. So, I'm going to add 4 more 7. And you can also copy and paste. So, it's going to be faster here. Second line, third line, fourth. And you see on top, it tells you what's the size of your kernel 7x7. Seven seven. So, if you're it's not always easy to know where you are, especially if you have different numbers. So here you can just see that you have a 7x7 seven seven kernel, one everywhere. So that's what we wanted. Let's apply this one. And let's um, adjust the intensity also. All right. So it's not a surprise. That's what you are expecting, if the kernel have a larger size, then you're gonna uh, blur even more because you do the average of intensity in a um, local neighborhood that is larger, which involves uh, more uh, blurring. So as you can see here, we have the same nuclei clearly uh, with the 7x7 seven seven kernel, uh, it's almost uniform. While with the 3x3, three three, you, you see uh, more differences inside the nucleus. We can look at what at the original image in the same region. You will see that it's much less uniform. So that's expected. Okay, so I'm going to close the two filtered image images. All right. And uh, now I want to use convolutional uh, kernel. So I want to do convolutions as well, but to try to extract the contours. So um, what we can do here first is to look at the derivatives in x and y to see if we can um, extract what's the changing the most in this, which, which are the contours. So where we have high deri derivatives in both x and y, it should correspond to region where the intensity is changing a lot, with, which is in this image, uh, which corresponds to the contours. So I'm going to, um, again, duplicate twice this image 
one for the derivative in x and the second one for the derivative in y. So image duplicate dy. Okay. So let's start with the dx. So we use again the filters, process filters convolve. And we, we're going to use just a 3x3 three three kernel for the derivative in, in x, which is going to be minus 1, 0, plus 1, minus 2, 0, plus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1. All right. So this is the results. Let's adjust the intensity to see better what we have. Oh, and you see, I made a mistake because I applied on a 16 bits. So I have only positive values, but derivatives can be negative. All right, so let's do it again. First, we need to change the type to 32 bits. And now I can duplicate this image, dx, okay? Again, dy, duplicate, dy. Okay, so I can filter this image, filters convolve, and so the, the kernel hasn't changed, so it's still the good one, the right one for the derivative in x, so I can just apply it. All right, and that looks better. Now you see we have both negative and positive values. Let's adjust a little bit to better see what we have. All right, so if we, um, maybe we can zoom in. So on this nucleus, for example, you see that in the background, it's more or less uniform. Then when we arrive on the contour, of a nucleus in the x direction, we first have high positive values. And it, 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 it makes sense because we apply the derivative. So we actually um, take the intensity of the pixel that are in, in the nucleus and we subtract the intensity of the pixels that are in the background. So high intensity in the nucleus, low intensity in the background, then when we do this operation, we have a high value. And that's why on the contour, we have high value here because we are in the X direction. Now, if we go on the other side, now we have very low values, low negative values. Again, it makes a lot of sense because we are subtracting high intensity in the nucleus from low intensity in the background. So now we have negative values, okay? So as you can see, high values on, on the contours that are on the left of the nucleus, low values on the right, and almost nothing when you look uh, from top to bottom. And that's normal because we just look at the X derivative now if we apply the y derivatives, we should have high values at the top and the bottom of the nucleus. So let's do it. We go to process filters, convolve, and now we're going to define the derivative in y. So it's going to be minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, And we have a three by three kernel, so it's fine. Let's apply it. And now you see we have something similar, but instead of uh, identifying the contours that are on the left or the right of the nucleus, now we have contours that are at the top of the bottom. So let's look at the nucleus that is aligned in the x direction. So high contours here and here. So we have very high values 
on this. Again, we subtract low values from high values, so it's high. And now very low values here because we subtract high values from low values. All right, how can we use this to try to um, get the contours? Because here we only have a so x direction contours, y direction contours. So first of all, if we want to identify the contours, we want to be able to identify both uh, contours from, uh, so in, in these images, the high and the low values. So there's something that is fairly easy to have high values everywhere. We just uh, take the square value. So that's something we can do uh, as a mathematical operation uh, on each image. So let's go to process math and now we use the square so the high value is going to be even higher and the low value is going to be um, positive now all right so you see we don't have any negative values anymore that's normal because we uh, use the square so the, the range of intensity is really high because we have very, very high values. So most of the, of the intensity are on the left side of the histogram. So it makes it really difficult to navigate here. So maybe we can try to set it. Like if we put um, 10,000, what does it look like? It's, it's too low put 100,000, that's better, still a bit low, maybe we can go to 300,000, okay, looks better. So as you can see, we have some high values in the nuclei, but mostly the high values are in the contours, and now, uh, so as it's from the derivative in y, it's uh, the contours, um, so at the top and bottom of the nuclei, of course. Um, it's it's uh, interesting because as we, we have low values in the x uh, direction, uh, they, they look like uh, coffee beans a little bit. Uh, so let's apply the same thing to the derivative in x. So we go to process, math, and square. And so let's adjust it again. So again, we don't have any negative values. So here, it's it's not too bad. I'm not going to set it manually because it's already pretty pretty good. So very similar to here, but uh, in the other direction. So if we want to have all the contours, now we can combine both of these images by um, adding them. So let's go to process, now image calculator, and we're going to do, so it's not dx anymore, it's dx square. We're going to add, so tap add, dy square, 32 bit is ticked, we hit OK. And we need to adjust because only the the nucleus that has very, very high values is visualized for now. So again, it might be difficult to have a good visualization by using the sliding bar. But, you know, as you can see, uh, two million, let's just, yeah, set it up manually. It might be easier if we go to one million. Okay, so as you can see, the contours are um, pretty nicely defined. Not only the contours, we also have a region inside the nuclei. It's where the fluctuations of intensity are higher. But as you can see, when we have this these high values inside the nuclei, it correspond to a nuclei that has also uh, high high values for the contours. So probably they had all higher intensity to start with. 
um, and the ones that have lower intensity are harder to to see but but still you see it's it's one way to identify the contours at least to identify very high fluctuations of of intensity which we see on the contours <laughs>